Thanks also to all the Irish farmers, growers and fishermen who are producing foods of the highest possible standards. Foods and ingredients that we're using in these recipes. Um, this is a lovely tzatziki. Now, I'm actually going to start on the chicken here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brown my chicken. So I've got some lovely chicken thighs here. And I'm not going to season it. I'm not going to use any flour. I'm not going to use any salt or pepper at this stage. But I've got some sunflower oil. Sunflower oil does burn uh, at very high temperatures. Don't ever use olive oil or extra virgin olive oil when you're frying food. Um, not only is it carcinogenic, uh, but also you can't achieve very high temperatures with olive oil. Now, I've also got some in the oven which are already um, cooked off. So I'm going to show you how to brown these. Um, and I've got a pretty high temperature on here. So it's really just to kind of to get them around, uh, to get them going here in the oil a little bit, um, get some infusion of flavor. Um, and then I'm going to turn them up ever so slightly. And then there we go. So I'm gonna leave that there for probably about two or three minutes just frying away. Next thing I'm gonna do here, um, I have some lovely um, cucumber. So the cucumber, and this is a little trick with your cucumber. When you're buying a cucumber, you're gonna chop it in half, like so, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it down like so. Now in here, and we'll show you here on the overhead camera, we have all of the, that's very, very moist and very wet. You're gonna get a spoon and you're gonna scoop that out. Um, and then what you do is you grate it and then we have this. So this is the grated cucumber here, which works really, really well. So in that, I'm gonna move this over here. I'm gonna have a little bit of garlic. So I've got some lovely crushed garlic. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of salt and pepper in there. So a bit of pepper. I've got some maldron sea salt. So just a little bit of the maldron sea salt. And I have some lovely Greek style yogurt. Now the Greek style yogurt um, is lovely first thing in the morning with some fresh berries. Um, and, but I'm gonna make this tzatziki and it's absolutely to die for. It's one of my favorite Greek dishes. So I'm gonna put in about three or four scoops here. There we go, three will do. And I'm gonna give that a good old mix. So in there, mix that up. Now, the garlic is really important for this, but the other piece de la resistance for this particular dish is the mint. So I'm gonna finish that off with a little bit of mint. And this is lovely with some sourdough bread um, or just some fresh bread rolls if you're doing up some salads. Leave that there for the moment. And then I'm gonna get my mint leaves. So the mint leaves, again, they do wilt pretty quickly. That has got a good temperature on it there. I'm using induction cooking, I love induction cooking. So, and I don't want to overdo it here with the mint leaves either. And I'm gonna chop these up and I'm gonna sprinkle that over the tzatziki. And that's gonna give it a lovely fresh flavor of the mint. It works really well. So this is something you can do pretty quickly and easily at home. So I'm gonna mix that in and I can get that lovely aroma of the mint. It just works really, really well. And what I'm gonna do here now, I'm gonna add a little bit of my lemon juice. Mix that in like that. And I'm gonna taste it to make sure we've got enough seasoning in there. So, mm. there's enough garlic, there's enough pepper, enough salt. Again, don't put too much salt in there. And we could finish that off here with a little bit of olive oil as well. So I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in there. Not only does it add flavor, um, but I'm gonna put this under the overhead camera here again. So you can see here that olive oil um, infusing through that beautiful mixture of lovely yogurt. Okay, so that's that complete. That's done, lovely. Now, what I'm gonna finish off here are my chicken pieces. So the chicken pieces are nicely browned and I'm gonna finish those off in the oven. And then what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna use, I've got some bacon lardons, here we go. Um, and I'm gonna start making my sauce. I'm gonna make the sauce for my chicken now. So these are gonna go straight into the oven. There we go. And in here for the sauce, so we've got some bacon lardons. Here we go. I'm gonna put a little bit of butter in there as well. I'm gonna turn the temperature up slightly. Um, 
Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And I've got my, here we go. So here we go. I'm gonna add some, uh, let me see, what shall I use? I've got some lovely cherry tomatoes here. I've got some lovely peppers. So I'm gonna use the peppers here as well. Um, into my, we've washed these, and that's gonna go straight in here to my sauce. So turn the temperature up a little bit. Here we go. And these are lovely, sweet little kind of mini bell peppers. There we go. I've also got some onions here. So in we go with the onions, finely diced onions. Always important to have a little bit of garlic. So in we go with the garlic there. And this is gonna be the base for my sauce. It's gonna work really well. The other thing you can do uh, with your salad actually that we did uh, a little earlier, uh, you can use some um, roasted figs. So we've got some lovely roasted figs on there as well. And you could also garnish it with a little chili pepper as well. So that's a really nice uh, component to that particular dish. So I'm gonna leave that over there. This is cooking off really nicely. I can get the smell. And here we go, off with the gloves. Bit of, bit of pepper. a Little bit of salt. And if you want to make it a little healthier, you can remove some of the butter. But the thing to bear in mind is that this dish will be enough for six people. So I've only put about 80 grams of butter. Um, so, you know, you're only gonna have about 12 to 14 grams of butter per person. It's not a lot. Now, the next thing in here, I'm gonna put a little bit of flour. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a roux. There we go. The rule of thumb when you're making a roux is to use one part butter, one part um, flour, and then you're gonna up the quantity of, of liquid. So let's say, for example, we want to make 400 milliliters. So you're gonna have 40 grams of butter, 40 grams of flour, and 400 uh, milliliters of milk or liquid. So in we go here, this is for the roux. And I've got this at quite a high temperature, so that means the flour is gonna cook off pretty quickly. I wanna put a bit of wine into this as well. So in we go here at the wine. And I want that wine to cook out. I've used a lovely, uh, it's a Pinot Grigio um, with a Sauvignon Blanc mixed. So in we go here. So you can see that coming together quite nicely. So that's gonna be a beautiful consistency. And I'm gonna add some milk and cream into that as well. And then once I'm finished and once that's cooked out, I'm gonna add the chicken back into it and then we're gonna serve up. Um, but that works really, really well. So I've got some uh, milk here. So in we go with our milk. So this is gonna be a lovely cream sauce. Leave that there. And then I'm gonna bring the temperature back up on that. Um, I'm gonna taste this just to make sure that our flavor balance is okay. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. I don't need any more pepper, we've got enough salt in there. What you could add is a little bit of nutmeg and that will add, you know, a little bit of, um, you know, a, a, a nice kind of musty type flavor, but it works really well. I'm gonna throw a few of my cherry tomatoes in there as well. Um, here we go. And I'm gonna add a little bit of cream and that's just gonna finish off the flavor balance rather nicely in there. And then we're ready soon enough, because that's actually cooked out. Because I had that at quite a high temperature, that, um, that roux uh, mix, that flour mix has cooked out really, really quickly. I'm gonna add a little bit more milk, and then I'm happy enough with the seasoning of that. As you can see, we've done all of this in front of you. All I've had are the ingredients ready uh, to go, um, and I've cooked it um, as live. So don't think that we've faked everything. This is a live show where we're doing everything directly in front of you. If you do have any questions, if you can use your chat bar, and then Karen will then uh, let me know at the end whether or not you have anything that you'd like me to answer. Um, but I'd be delighted to do that. So I'm gonna give this one last taste. Here we go. A little bit more pepper. Reason for doing that is because I've added a bit more liquid, so um, it's a little bit more watery. I might put a little bit of salt. When you're cooking, sometimes you'll find, is it missing something? I'm not sure what that is. And a tiny little sprinkle of salt will actually allow those flavors to develop further, so it works really, really well. So the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna add my chicken. There we go, great. So our chicken here has cooked off nicely. So you can see here, 
This is what we did a little bit earlier. Now, any of this juice or grease, I'm not gonna include that. Um, so in we go here, and that's gonna finish off these thighs really, really well. And then I'm gonna turn the temperature down a little bit. So here we go. And what we can do is we can add a few more of our tomatoes in here for just a little bit of color as well. So that works really, really well. So that's cooked through. I'm gonna give that one last taste and we'll see how we're getting on. Oh, that's really good. I don't think that's gonna need anything else actually. And uh, what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna serve that up now. And what you could do is you could serve that up with, um, with some rice.